The Y-Wing Fighter Bomber is a solid, tried and true design, every bit as venerable as something like the Z-95 Headhunter. These ships were originally designed as bombers and used heavily during the Clone Wars by the Galactic Republic. Later they were retrofitted and used by the Rebels, where they were the backbone of the Rebel forces in the early days of the Galactic Civil War. This presentation will explain the battle tactics of the Y-Wing during the Galactic Civil War and how the Rebels used it against the Galactic Empire. First a word about the original Y-Wing design, as used in the Clone Wars. The original Y-Wing had hull plating on its fuselage, which is a stark contrast from the worn mechanical appearance during the Galactic Civil War. With the advent of the Empire's extremely nimble TIE Fighter, the Y-Wing seriously had to shed some pounds. Y-Wings were also in constant need of maintenance, so the outer hull covering became an inconvenience for mechanics and weighed the ship down. So it was left off. Not only did this increase the ship's performance, but it allowed the components to stay cooler, which meant you could squeeze a little more engine performance out of the ship without it overheating. There also used to be a bubble canopy with the manned turret above the cockpit, which served as a great defense against droid fighters in the Clone Wars. But the Rebels of the Galactic Civil War had something else in mind, which I'll touch on later. But the primary role of the Y-Wing was still to attack larger ships as a bomber. It had a very large warhead capacity, usually packed full of proton torpedoes, the ideal weapon against large targets such as Star Destroyers. The Y-Wing could also use ion torpedoes, which were weapons that could disable other ships' systems. We saw some Y-Wings disable an entire Star Destroyer with these weapons at the Battle of Scarif, as seen in the movie Rogue One. I believe this occurred because most of the Imperial fighter force was devoted to protecting the shield gate rather than the Star Destroyers. In their arrogance, the Imperials underestimated the old Y-Wings, as this was one of the first major fleet engagements with the Rebels. And to be fair to the Imperials, the blow that finally disabled the Star Destroyer was probably not the first Ion Torpedo Salvo. No doubt the Imperials would not make this mistake in the future, which meant Y-Wings would require close X-Wing escort. But unlike during the Clone Wars, the Rebels did not intend the Y-Wings to be used in massive fleet engagements against the Empire. That role would later be filled by the B-Wings. Instead, the Rebels used Y-Wings to attack vulnerable supply lines and space infrastructure. Y-Wings were hyperdrive equipped, able to quickly hyperjump to the most vulnerable Imperial targets, and the Empire couldn't defend every location at once. Military supply convoys were a favorite target for Y-Wing squadrons. Y-Wing proton torpedoes could easily slaughter freighters, and the Y-Wings could jump back into hyperspace before reinforcements arrived. If there was time, rather than destroying the Imperial targets, Y-Wings were essential for their capture. The key to this was the Y-Wing's ion cannons, which replaced the old bubble turrets atop the cockpit. Unlike ion torpedoes, ion cannons did not use expensive ordnance. They could disable fighter-sized ships with ease, and non-warships, with no hardened electronics, could be easily disabled and then outright stolen by the Rebels. This is also true of various space stations. When attacking larger targets with lots of defense turrets, Y-Wings would follow behind X-Wings. One common maneuver was similar to the A-Wing Slash. While the X-Wings entered battle and drew turret fire, often attacking with their own salvo of proton torpedoes, the Y-Wings would literally target the X-Wings with their torpedoes. The X-Wings would head for the target with protons in tow. While preoccupied with the X-Wings, the enemy turrets were less likely to see the proton torpedoes. When the X-Wings were close to the target, they would pull up, and the torpedoes would smack into the target. But was the Y-Wing at all capable of taking out fighters? After all, it was slow and ungainly, and the answer is yes, but it was by no means a dogfighter. Obviously, the easiest way to do this is a head-to-head -head charge against lesser shielded fighters like TIE Fighters. The Y-Wing would simply take the hits and out-endure in a head-on situation. Another tactic for this heavily shielded ship, and while up against a relatively small number of more maneuverable fighters, was to simply slow to a virtual stop, shunt all engine power to shields and weapons, and use the Y-Wing like a tough mobile turret in space. While using this tactic, the Y-Wing didn't have to dogfight anybody, where it almost certainly would be outflanked and outmaneuvered. It could simply rotate in space and choose the targets it wanted, and those targets would be forced to strafe the Y-Wing, 
where the Y-Wing could simply point the nose at the incoming TIE fighters and use its powerful nose cannons to blast it. This tactic would of course fail against missile attacks or anything with heavy turbo lasers, but against a few TIE fighters at a time, this was very effective. That's all I have for the Y-Wing. Thank you for watching Space Friends. I really appreciate your response on the recent poll to help me decide what to do next. Say in the comments what you think about the Y-Wing and if you would have the balls to fly this in spite of its obvious age and weaknesses. Also, it is my dream to eventually commit full time to this channel. I'd like to get up in the morning and go directly to work on this content until I have to crash or am forced to go exercise. This channel is growing steadily thanks to you guys. As of right now, I'm unable to make a living on this without other forms of income to support myself. I do have Patreon at patreon.com resurrected, but I'm also open to ideas on how I might compel more people to become patrons, perhaps by giving something of value in return, or any other ways I can work towards making resurrected starships a full-time gig. In many ways, I'm still a newbie to YouTube, so feel free to offer feedback or suggestions in the comments. Meanwhile, thank you so much to current patrons and regular fans. Subscribe and keep an eye out for community posts about future projects. Until next time, space friends.